Hey everybody, it's time for another dull and technical game development video about my uh, game programming hijinks. Uh, I've done some pretty cool stuff since my last video. It was kind of dry and, uh, you know, to set up all this animation and stuff. And at one point I took like three days off uh, from programming just because I felt like I was getting a little burned out. And that was a good idea to do because I've been working on this every single day and, you know, I don't want to have it actually become dull and not be fun. So. Anyway, uh, after a little rest, I was back in action, and I did some neat stuff, so uh, check it out. So this character now walks in eight directions, um, and I'll show you how this works, but first I just wanted to talk about how I actually made the eight directions work. It took me a little bit of thinking to actually figure that out, because I didn't convert the movement into degrees or radians or anything like that. Basically, it calculates whether the character is traveling north, south, east, or west, whenever you plot a move and this green waypoint gets put down. So it's easy to determine because, you know, if the destination's x-coordinate is less than the player's x-coordinate, then that means they're moving north. You know, and if it's greater, it means they're moving south, and same for y. If the y is decreasing, they're going one way. If it's increasing, they're going the other way. So it's easy to calculate if they're moving up, down, left, or right. The trickier things were the in-between angles that are a little more oblique, or whatever the right term would be. Um, to get those working, what I had to do is first determine if we're traveling north, south, west, or east. Let's say we're traveling west. So, um, in this case, you can see that the mouse is pretty much even with where the character is moving, right? So, like, if I, if I click, they're just walking pretty much straight west or east. So how I determined if they needed to go up or down at an angle is if the cursor is not straight in line with the origin point at their feet, but instead if it's, say, 100 or 200 pixels off of that, then that just means don't travel straight west, travel northwest or southwest. So again, it's, it's calculating north, south, west, or east, and then if the cursor is not straight in line with that direction, but it's more than 100 pixels or whatever off to either side, then use the diagonal instead. I don't know if that makes sense, but it made sense to me and it works, so good enough. So, um, again, this is not 3D engine. I wanted to spend all my time with the simple 2D engine, but just figure out a pipeline to convert 3D art assets into 2D sprites. So as 3D as this looks, it's just sprites, which I will now prove to you. So over here on this workspace, this is the image for the player's walk animation. And what all this nonsense is, is this is frame one all the way up through right here. I can't draw a, a box on this, but so from this frame right here all the way over to this. These are eight images, and it corresponds to the first frame of walking shot from eight different directions. Then this starts the second frame from eight different directions. So it's a whole lot of images, and the way that I um, put those, you know, 10 or 20 frames shot at eight different directions into the the engine of the game is, it gives me an XML file that the program uh, frag motion that I'm using to photograph the models, it spits out this XML. So I basically created a method that will load each frame and it records the time, which is like the uh, the number of the frame. So it goes down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is frame seven. It's at the angle 270 degrees and it goes from zero up to 315, which is all eight angles that it's getting shot at, right? And then left and top tell me like the X and Y offset of where the frame itself begins in the overall sprite sheet. And the width and height, I went through some trouble and I had to post on a forum to figure this out. Uh, it's not a traditional sprite sheet where it's a grid and each frame has the same width and height. That's why I have to parse and process this XML file. The width and the height of each frame are different. So for example, this frame where Link's hat is longer that's a wider frame than this one, where his hat isn't poking out. Um, so the width and the height are different on each little image, which makes it tough. So I have to process the XML to get those values further. You'll notice that the feet, like over here, are much further down than this frame. So Link would jerk all around when he's walking, because it doesn't put them centered in their own cute little grids. So the XML stores an origin point, which you can see in this line right here. Origin X is 65 and Y is 113. I had to create an extra bone attachment, um, place it at the origin point of the model in the other frag motion program, and then this will export out 
the coordinates of where that point is in every frame. So I know where the base point is between the feet for every frame, and that's how I can draw the sprite using that as an offset and keep it centered in the correct position. That probably doesn't make any sense, uh, but that's about the best I can explain it. <laughs> so now when you notice that when I walk, or when the character walks, it's it looks like it pretty much should. Um, so when uh, my program will load an animation, so I have the stand, which is just this one frame shot from each of eight angles, and I have the walk, which is like ten frames. Um, each of those gets loaded by the player class, and when it's loaded, it processes everything out of that XML file one at a time and puts it into a struct, which is a frame struct, and I have an array of those frame structs, um, and that consists that's what the animation consists of, as well as some other methods like an update method which will increment the frames and loop them. Um, and the player class determines which animation is appropriate. So if, if you're not moving, it picks the standing animation. If you've clicked on the screen and set a waypoint and movement has started, it sets you to walking. And then when you arrive, it puts you back to, uh, to the standing animation. So the player class picks the appropriate animation. Um, the animation class keeps track of all the drawing, the frames, and all that stuff. Um, and the origin point, so it puts it at the right spot. And it also sets up the, uh, the direction that you're facing, so like the player keeps track of which direction they were last facing and continually passes that to the animation, so it shows you facing the right angle. So, in a nutshell of enjoyment, that is how I set up the sprite sheets and the animation to look this way. So, it looks like the pipeline is officially you know in place and it's working out well. Um, so next up, I'm going to have to modify, if you remember, my players to look like this. These are the enemies. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to get them using the same stuff. And right now, like if I put those crates down, the player just goes right through them because the, uh, the bounding boxes work differently. What I'm going to need to do is make like a bounding box for the player's foot so that will control where you bump into things. I don't want to move like... I'll get out of the way. I don't want to move like right here and have the hat or the player's helmet or head or whatever bump into the box and <clears throat> and stop the motion. That would just be ridiculous. They should they should stop when they get like actually up here so you'd be somewhat overlapping the objects which will, you know, join this 40 degree angle that the player is looking being looked at too. So you want your feet to actually control the bumping, not like the top of your head, which doesn't make sense. Then I'll make an overall bounding box for the player or for the characters to determine when they're hit by bullets and things like that. So I'll actually have a flat bounding box on the ground, like a square that determines if your feet are bumping into stuff. And then uh, an overall box for getting hit by bullets and other things that would collide with the entire body of the characters. So, uh, so those bounding boxes are probably next. And then I'm probably going to have to look into cleaning this stuff up so I can actually have the sprites look nice with textures and get uh, my artist drawing things, um, you know, like final sorts of art to settle on like a style and how everything will look. So that's the progress I've made. So I hope you find that interesting. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter where I continually post, uh, you know, daily updates about what I'm doing and ranting about compiling or other technical nonsense. So I um, hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoy following along with my crazy updates. And uh, I'll see you soon. Take it easy.